Well, summer welcomes a whole world of wonderful fresh food and fruit. And our resident foodie, Alice, has plenty to, uh, plenty of ideas to make the most of it. Alice Zavzowski joins us now. Good morning. Good morning and Happy New Year. Happy I'm New Year. Glad we're, to be here. We're talking season, seasonal. It looks, oh, all of the, my favourite stuff, the stone fruit, the cherries. What have you got for us? This is the time. It's also my favourite time of year for, for fruit. And we really don't need to do much to it to make it delicious. So I thought I'd take inspiration from some classic Aussie favourites yep. um, when it comes to desserts and simplify them because there's gluten-free, dairy-free situation on the couch. Sadly. Um, <laughs> which is, it might be sad, you know, in, you might see it as sad, but I see it as an opportunity because it means that I can keep things really simple. Uh, these are really just all fruit salads and fruit is all about how you cut it. It's all about the slice. It's a bit like sushi, actually. You know, if you've got a really nice sharp knife and you can cut into the fish, mm. Mm. exactly the same way with fruit. So, um, you know, cutting peaches for and example. So what you've done here and, I, yes. and you're right here because it is the cutting it's the presentation it Alice is. so this is your take on a peach melba. It is Yes, uh, Peach Melba, of course, named after our very own Dame Nellie Melba and created by Escoffier in uh, Paris. This is very much um, a combination of peaches, raspberries, flaked almonds and a coconut ice cream, mm. which you must... I, I see the peaches. Yes. What makes it a Peach Melba or what makes it a variant of the Peach Melba? <laughs> it's all about those the flavour combinations. Yeah, okay. So a Peach Melba traditionally would have a sponge. It would oh. have um, the, poach, the, the peaches might be poached or baked, there'd be a raspberry coolie. But why bother? It's summertime, you're still <laughs> off work. Don't bother yourself, don't fuss, keep it simple. The fruit is good enough as it is. And actually, a lot of this cooking is in the shop. So use your nose, make sure that you're mm -hmm. looking at the fruit, use all of your senses when you're purchasing. And so many great growers are available to, to buy online now too. You can find small producers, even schools now, rather than selling chocolate boxes, they're selling boxes of ripe yeah. mangoes. So that's the time, you know, we've got, we've got mango in our pav. Yeah. I love that you've served oh. that That's so good. <laughs> Excuse it's, me. So, well, let's talk That's about... It. You just keep going. It's, yeah. I'm just going to do pav. this. The pav. Yes. So this is pavlova. It is. I've never had a peach melba before, oh. so that's why I asked, but I've had a pavlova before. Mm -hmm. It, pavlova is all about the meringue and the, the there's none of that. None of that. But there's passion fruit in this. Tell us about yes. how it, this is a pav without the pav. Pavlova is traditionally all about the meringue, but it's actually really all about the fruit. The meringue's kind of more like an edible plate. So mm. the fruit here, mangoes, blueberries, strawberries, and just passion fruit pulp. And um, that combination together, I think, is really fabulous. And I should take this as an opportunity to say, even if you don't take inspiration from classic Australian desserts when you're making a fruit salad the thing that's missing in all of these fruit salads is watermelon keep watermelon out of your fruit salad really why 90 percent water and all of that water sits in the bottom of your fruit salad oh it breaks the rest of it down that is such a good tip that's what go. i've been doing wrong that's what, all yeah. of these years yeah. okay thank you watermelon is a friend but just keep it separate can i just say coconut if you even if you are like me you're not dairy intolerant coconut ice cream is so good. It's like so good. it's it's absolutely worth doing yeah. and you don't need an excuse to do it. Not at all. And if you don't if you can't find coconut ice cream or if you don't want to use an ice cream, you can also blitz up frozen raspberries to make a really simple raspberry sorbet. One ingredient, blitz them up in a blender and um, and they'll they'll come together enough for you to be able to serve them out. What's this guy? This is a lamington. People at home, I'm sure, are just like <laughs> shaking their fists. That's not a lamington. I see the coconut yes. shreds. It's That's a lamington. Coconut shreds, <laughs> coconut yogurt, cherries, because cherries are just too good at the moment. The thing that I wanted to reiterate with this is when you're serving, right, see, think about how people are going to eat your fruit salad. So this one's really easy. It's almost like a little um, hors d'oeuvre. But the which seeds you... in the cherry. <laughs> the cherries are pitted. Hey. So I'm thinking about not interrupting the rhythm of your eating of these fruit salads. So every bite should it has be, to be constant. Constant, exactly. You're no so, room to talk, just so... constant. <laughs> <laughs> no room to talk, just eat. Exactly. She's so thoughtful. Um, uh, and also you've got uh, an article on ABC Every Day, which yes. is what used to be ABC Life. It's now called ABC Every Day, about how to cut fruit. And can you please tell me how to cut a pineapple so I don't have the eyes? Because I never... I'm like in my 40s and I still can't do it. The eyes have it. And <laughs> actually what people tend to do is they cut too much of the flesh off that pineapple yes. to get rid of the eyes. Yes. So instead of doing that, cut as close to the skin as possible and then get rid of the eyes. They actually grow diagonally. So if you slash at them with a paring knife just to mm. 
um, slap, hack in, hack in, you get a beautiful pattern as well, right. and then you can chop that pineapple hack. My secret of cutting pineapple is get a, a butcher's knife and then find my grandmother. <laughs> yes! And combine the two. I love um, it. How do you pit a cherry, really quickly? You can use a cherry pitter for this, okay. Uh, okay. which I know is, is yeah. just elementary, but if you're making jams, if you're doing these sorts of desserts, it is worth investing. It's like five, six bucks, and you will use it a lot. You can also oh. use uh, the top of a bottle and a chopstick or any sort of skewer and poke the cherry pit right out or you can if you want to get really fancy use a pair of tweezers and oh. tweeze out. Who's got time it. for that? Who's got time for that? Alice you always bring us so much oh. inspiration. Thank you so much and thanks for all of this gorgeous fruit. Oh you're so, so welcome. <laughs> what a way to start the day. Yes definitely. <laughs> thanks Alice.